Near Field Communications, or NFC, is quickly becoming a part of our lives, like paying for a parking meter with just the tap of our phone instead of digging through our cup holders for spare change. NFC makes so many tasks easier, but designing and making NFC devices is not always so easy. Hi, I'm Melissa at Keysight Technologies, and in this episode of Scopes University, we'll be showing you how to test your NFC-enabled components with an oscilloscope. You can think of NFC like a short-range version of radio frequency identification. NFC uses electromagnetic fields between two devices to enable communication between them. Passive NFC components store data that can be read by active NFC components. Active components can read and send information. For example, an NFC tag, a passive component, can have information stored on it about a historical exhibit. When you move your smartphone, an active NFC component, over the exhibit display, your phone can read the info from the tag and show it on your phone so you can learn about the exhibit. Your phone can also share files with another active NFC-enabled device. NFC communication often involves financial transactions like paying for groceries and security information like clearance badges. NFC is even being used by automotive manufacturers to replace car keys. Therefore, reliable and secure communication is a must. You can gain peace of mind that your designs meet quality and reliability requirements by debugging and testing the physical layer of your NFC designs. Using oscilloscope software is a great way to perform fast, low-cost NFC pre-compliance tests during design or even manufacturing to make sure quality is being maintained. Johnny Hancock, our InfiniVision product manager, is going to show us how to test NFC-enabled devices. He's going to show us how to trigger on events like sense and all requests, test frame delay, demodulate the response and pulling signals, and make frequency domain measurements to look at the carrier and side frequencies of the response. If you want to follow along on your InfiniVision oscilloscope, you can download a free trial of the NFC triggering and automated test software at the link in the screen and in the description. What I'm going to be testing is communication between a tag, which happens to be NFCA, and a mobile phone, which supports multiple polar and listener modes. The way I'm going to capture these signals is I have a NFC calibration coil here. You could think of it as a sniffer, RF sniffer, or an RF probe. What I'm going to do first is simply place my NFC tag onto this calibration coil antenna and then I have a very precision spacer here, a yellow sticky pad. It's about five millimeters. I ripped it in half. And then I'm going to place my mobile phone onto that. Now, if you heard the doink, first of all, that's a good sign. They're communicating. Now, that's as far as some people go when it comes to testing NFC. But I think you should go a little further than that. So let's go ahead and take a look at these signals, look at the quality of them, and make various measurements on the oscilloscope. We'll begin with the default setup, and then we'll set up everything from scratch. Let's go into the channel one menu first of all, and select 50 ohm coupling. And now let's scale the vertical, get close to full scale scaling here. And now let's go into the trigger menu. The default trigger is edge triggering. Now what a lot of people use for triggering on NFC is pulse width triggering, but it's very difficult to lock in on specific um, sense requests or responses. So in this oscilloscope with the NFC option, we have NFC triggering. So that's what we'll select. Now it's got a very low trigger rep rate, so we need to go to the normal trigger as opposed to auto. And let me turn up the waveform intensity here, and we can probably see something here. This is either the sense request or all request coming from the, the mobile phone, which is the polar in this case. And this may be difficult to see. This is the response from the tag that I'm testing. Now, if I scale down a little bit here, you can also see later on during the communication the SDD request, or single device detection request, and then the SDD response, again, from the, from the tag. So let's, uh, let's go back. 
zoom back in on this first set of communications with the sense request or the all request and the um, and the response. And let's take a look at the various trigger selections. You can trigger on NFC A, B, NFC F212, or 424. The default, when I press default setup, goes to NFC A. And then you can also trigger on specific events. Sense request, which in this, this tells me it stopped triggering. It's not a sense request. It is an all request, or I could select either, which was the default. And then you can also trigger on SDD request. We'll use that one later on. So let's go to trigger on all requests. The next thing, let's perform some measurements on both uh, signals from the listener, being the NFC tag, that's these, this right here, and then we'll perform some polar testing. The first thing we might want to know is the frame delay time. For that, I could use some automated measurements, set up custom thresholds, but the easiest is just to use the cursors. I'm going to put my X1 marker there and my X2 marker at the beginning of the response, and I can read off delta X 92 microseconds. That's within the limits. Off the top of the head, I don't know what the exact limits are, but you can check in the NFC specification. Next, let's zoom in on just the response and look at some of these bits out here. I'm going to use the scope's zoom mode. I'm going to turn the cursors back off. Let's open it up a little bit. Scroll over here. And here we can see the response modulation. What I'd like to do now is set up a waveform math function in the oscilloscope to demodulate it for us in software. So I'm going to select the waveform math function, math1, and I'm going to use a math function called envelope mode, which runs a Hilbert transform on channel 1. Oh, I turned it off. Let's turn it back on. Now, this looks pretty noisy. Now, we can add to this a smoothing filter on Math 1. And let's do about a seven-point smoothing filter. So there's our load modulation. Now, I, now, at this point, I can perform some measurements specifically on this demodulated waveform. For instance, if you wanted to know what the um, load modulation amplitude is, I could select measurements, add a measurement on math2, and select amplitude. And it's about 72 millivolts. If I want to know what the frequency of this is, this is the subcarrier. Let's just measure the frequency on math two, and it should be about 845 kilohertz. Now there's another way you can make measurements on the subcarrier, this modulation, and that's in the frequency domain. Let's set that up now. So I'm going to turn off this math function and turn on FFT. I'm going to perform an FFT magnitude on channel 1, but it's going to be a gated FFT by the zoom mode. I only want to perform the FFT on this subcarrier within the modulation. So first of all, I need to zoom in a little further. Let's go back and set up a center frequency of 13.56 megahertz and a span of about 3 megahertz. And so here we can see the carrier. This is the lower sideband and the upper sideband. Let's use the scope's frequency peak search capability. Let's search on three peaks. Let's set our thresholds down here so they're within the sidebands. And there you can see the triangles. It has found these peaks. And let's put these in frequency order. And here you can see the 13.52 megahertz, 2.69 dBm, lower sideband 12.71. And you can read the amplitude 
as well as the upper sideband. Now, there's not a lot of frequency resolution in this measurement, what, although what is most important is the amplitude of the sidebands. If I want higher frequency resolution, I can open up my window and capture more cycles, and you can see now it's measuring 13.56 megahertz. So let's move to make some measurements on the polar signals now. Let's turn the FFT off. Let's go ahead and turn the zoom off. And now I'm going to change the trigger to trigger on SS SDD request. So this is the SDD request. Let's turn the zoom mode back on and scroll back over to this series of pulses. These are is the modulation that's coming from my mobile phone. Again, we will turn math three off, turn on math two, should be all set up to show the um, demodulated waveform using software. Now the scaling is a little different. I'm gonna set that up so it is the same scaling. Um, should be about 150 millivolts per division, the same as channel one, and offset should be about zero volts. So that will lay it right on top of the modulation. Now there's a different set of parameters that you want to measure on NFC A polar signals. Um, they're called T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. We're going to do a couple of them here. T2 is the time below the 5% level. So we can use an automatic measurement for that. We're going to select a minus width measurement, but I need to customize the thresholds on the math two waveform and set the midpoint at 5%, then select that measurement. So there you can see the time between the cursors is measuring approximately 2.1 microseconds. Another critical measurement is, is uh, there's two measurements that are transition time measurements, so basically rise time measurements. Uh, one is from 5% to 90%, that's the T3 factor. And by the way, you probably saw on your screen a uh, diagram showing these different uh, timing parameters. So let's measure a rise time and set the thresholds to measure from lower, from 5%, upper to 90%, it's already there. Go back and add that measurement. And there we measure about 460 nanoseconds and the other transition time measurement measures to 60%, 5% to 60%. And there you can see about 240 nanoseconds. The last measurement I'll make it's actually already up, is the frequency. So this is the data rate. It's 106 kilohertz baud rate, 106 kilobits per second. The InfiniVision oscilloscopes also provide automated tests. To see a how-to video on automated NFC measurements, follow the link in the description. To learn more about making NFC measurements, you can read the application notes linked in the description. Thanks for joining today. Before you head out, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.